75 yards in four plays. Kenny Yaboa, the big play that got them down close. Now this was the, the, the big play. There was a missed tackle by Daniel Wright, the free safety, which turned this into a big play. And then a little trickeration on the goal line. Great play call by Lane Kiffin, Jeff Levy. Faked the run. You see the line didn't go beyond the line of scrimmage. It was pass all the way, but the fake by the quarterback brought the linebackers up and the little jump pass a la Tim Tebow for the first touchdown of the football game. How long do you think Lane Kiffin has been working on that script, Todd? <laughs> wow. I mean, what a perfect start for them. Big play officially 52 yards, the touchdown six. Now Luke Logan's kickoff fielded by Jalen Waddle. And he went out of bounds at the 15. So poor field position for another quarterback who I think has been better than most expected. First full year as the starter, Mac Jones, the quarterback for the tie, the redshirt junior from Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, two weeks ago, people were saying, is he just gonna be, uh, kind of hold the position until the youngster, Bryce Young, takes over? But he has been spectacular in leading this offense. Lots of big plays, lots of speed on the outside, and they love to attack down the field. Najee Harris, one of the best running backs in the country, gets the handoff. They want to get the running game going. They've rushed for only 110 yards per game on their way to 2-0, and but they haven't needed to run it because they've thrown it so effectively. Well, and this would be the game to try to get that going. This Ole Miss defense a week ago gave up over 400 yards rushing to Kentucky. Jones given time by that excellent offensive line. Jalen Waddle the catch and the first down with a yard to spare out to the 26. And Ole Miss has the second worst run defense in all of college football right now. And just watching the tape, you can see the run fits, the lack of discipline. Very frustrating for this coaching staff. Najee Harris is so much bigger and stronger and running aggressively this year, but they haven't been able to get him loose. I think tonight's going to be his night. They take it to him and they flip it to the speedy Waddle. Weaving through the traffic and out near midfield with another first down run down by the middle linebacker Momo Sonogo. So interesting to me to see how similar Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator, play caller for Alabama, and Lane Kiffin are. They grew up in this profession together. We've seen kind of trick plays by both offenses in their opening possessions. Really do a great job of getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Spent time together at USC. Under Pete Carroll, of course, both of them, Pippen and Sarkeesian, former USC head coaches. Harris driven back. Matter of fact, Lane Kippen said, I was the one who suggested to Nicky bring Steve yeah. Sarkeesian to Alabama after he was dismissed as the head coach at USC. And that's worked out very well for the Crimson Tide. Well, both of those guys, as happens to a lot of coaches that come to Alabama, they get a retread when they spend some time with Nick Saban and they leave as better football coaches. Sarkeesian stepped in as the offensive coordinator for the 2016 National Championship game against Clemson when Kiffin parted ways with Saban. Waddle, another big play. He's inside the 35-yard line. He's averaging better than 21 yards per catch this season. The difference between Waddle this year and last year, he's not only in the slot. They're using him out of the backfield, they're using him out wide, and he's proving that he is an all-around receiver. And when he catches the ball in space, there are very few people that are gonna catch up to him if he gets ahead of you. As you can tell, the rain intensifying a little bit, but really just a heavy mist now. And very little breeze, for those of you who weren't with us at the top of the telecast. It's a tropical depression here, and a much better night than many thought. Jalen Jones made the tackle on Najee Harris. As a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, this kickoff was pushed back an hour and a half with an eye toward the weather. And there was even talk about playing it on a different day, but they made the right decision to do it tonight. Waddle the brief breather. They have plenty of other people who can run like the wind as well. We'll talk to DJ Durkin, the defensive coordinator for Old Miss. It's the speed of Alabama that jumps out as much as anything else, more than anything else. Harris inside the 28-yard line. They'll need four more for a first down. Well, so far, better tackling by this Ole Miss defense on the big back, Najee Harris. 
So far, off to a decent start. Big third down play here. Ole Miss has had trouble getting off the field on third down, allowing their opponents to convert 57%. But a big opportunity here early in the ballgame. There's DJ Durkin. First year as the defensive coordinator here. You got Waddle right here on the inside. Mac Jones, given time, has his man. This will depend on the spot. Uh, looks like it is going to be a first down for Najee Harris, who's an excellent receiver out of the backfield. Had seven receiving touchdowns last year. And Ole Miss knows its, its weakness on the defensive side. They're loading up the box. Seven, eight, sometimes nine guys in the box to try to stop the run. And what that's going to do is open up things for Devontae Smith and Waddle, who we've talked about. Yeah, Najee Harris that time coming out of the backfield. We talked to him this week. He says, hey, I'm not just a wheel route guy. That wasn't a wheel route, a little crossing route. They pick it to Harris. They send it out to Devontae Smith. And it looks like he has another first down to the 13-yard line. So after the quick strike and under a minute by Ole Miss, Alabama moving impressively, looking to tie it. Yeah. And, and just so impressed with Mac Jones and his quick decision-making. The ball, he doesn't hold the ball too long. He knows where he wants to go with the ball, and he distributes it to all of his playmakers. Everybody should be happy in this Alabama offense. He swings it out wide. Devontae Smith with blockers. There's a flag down. He went into the end zone for a touchdown. I don't know if that was a flag or a towel that came out. Perhaps it was the towel. Look from here like a flag. But there's no movement by the officials to talk about a penalty. Yeah, it's a yellow piece of equipment. I think it was a yellow mouthpiece, I think, that came out. Nice block by Mechie. He kept his hands inside on that block. A lot of times you see a receiver get called for a holding or an illegal use of hands. Did a good job keeping his hands inside on that block. 14-yard touchdown pass to Devontae Smith. He was pretty good against these guys last year, too, right? He sure was. <laughs> Here's the extra point try from Will Riker. And that is good. Quick throw out of the quarterback's hands. Good blocking on the perimeter by John Mechie. And just like that, two touchdowns in the ball game. It could be that kind of night. Presented by PlayStation 5. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Entertaining start to this one. It has already been a very exciting day of college football around the country. Fair catch of Chase Allen's kickoff made. Well, we've talked about the relationship. Lane Kiffin hired by Nick Saban, 2014. And as Coach Saban said, he did a terrific job. You know, it seemed like every year he changed the offense to fit the skills of his players, which yep. is good coaching, particularly his quarterbacks. They won three SEC championships together, but Lane had accepted the job at FAU prior to the championship game against Clemson. And I think Nick didn't like the way the preparation was going. Well, they made a decision not long before the game to part company. Here's a backward pass to Elijah Moore on first down. That's a, that's a dangerous kind of play on a weather like this. And Lane Kiffin said, uh, both of them said, really, there's no bad blood. You yeah. know, Nick said, I harbor no ill will. Lane Kiffin said it was very painful, told us the other day, to watch Alabama lose that game because yeah. it came down to the last play. And he said, yeah. Sark's a great coach, but I think since I worked with him all year, I could have helped make a difference with a player, too. Well, and he also said that he didn't feel like he, he felt like he could have handled it more maturely also, mm -hmm. the whole situation. You know, he was late to a couple meetings. He missed a couple bus trips. I mean, those kind of things just don't sit well with a guy like Nick Saban, and it makes him question whether you're all in or not. And I think that whether Lane was or not, it could have handled, been handled differently. Third down and seven. Again, Yaboa's wide open. He was the standout of that opening touchdown drive. And he's out to the 45 with a 17-yard gain. DeMarco Hellams to stop. 
The Chick-fil-A impact players, Todd McShay. Yeah, on, on the offensive side, we've talked about Elijah Moore and the way they utilize him and move him around on defense. It's Dylan Moses, the linebacker for Bama. And a catch made on the slide by Jonathan Mingo, who had eight catches in their overtime win at Kentucky last week. They open with a loss here to Florida, 51-35, and then they got their first win under Lane Kiffin last Saturday in a thriller. Rallied from 14 down to beat Kentucky, 42-41 in overtime, and a missed extra point was the difference in the game. High snap, Jerry and Ely gets about nine and almost 10 as he got shoved along to the 35-yard line. It's the best run play of the ball game. They've been doing a lot of play action fake. Matt Corral spreading the football around. That play keeps you honest. Whoa. That snap. Yeah, they've had problems with the snaps in the past. Spent a lot of time working on it this week, and that one very costly. Ben Brown is the center. But he's spent most of his career at right guard. Last week against Kentucky, I counted almost five bad snaps, particularly when there was a defender lined up right over his nose. They changed the way he was snapping the football this week, and you've got a little bit of a wet ball, and that one, very lucky that Matt Corral was able to corral it. Well done. See what you did there. Both teams <laughs> spent time this week, and they do every week, in the wet ball drill, soaking footballs and having the center, quarterback, skilled players handle the ball. See, when you put somebody right over the nose of the center, he's thinking about that. But he's got to think snap first. They just barely got it off if, in fact, they did on time. Corral tripped up by Will Anderson, the outstanding true freshman from Hampton, Georgia, who was expected to be an immediate impact player, and he has been. He's so quick off the ball. His first step, and then he's relentless, plays with high energy, great motor, chases it down from the backside and gets the play. So the bad snap and the 18-yard loss, a killer. They're going to pull off an upset tonight. They can't have things like that happen to them. Mac Brown, senior punter out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota. In his third year as their starting punter. Special teams player of the week for his performance at Kentucky last week. Averaged nearly 50 yards per punt. Wow, that was close. And that pressure on. Jalen Waddle watches it go over his head and it goes into the end zone for a touchback. 51 yard punt. Alabama on offense for the second time. Great weapons around Mac Jones when we come back. Devontae Smith, the Alabama touchdown tonight, picking up right where he left off a year ago. When he scored five touchdowns on 11 catches, 274 receiving yards against the Ole Miss Rebels. Here's his touchdown tonight. A good blocking by John Mechie. So he averaged 25 yards per catch against the Rebels last year. His five touchdowns tied the SEC single game record. His 274 receiving yards, sixth best in a single game in SEC history. Seen a lot of short throws so far for Alabama. Haven't seen him try to take the top off yet. Najee Harris, terrific run, showing some patience, great footwork, and then power at the end. Kedron Smith got him down, but it's another first down on a 12-yard game. Yeah, I think we all kind of felt like this was the game for him to kind of break out because when we watch this offensive line on film, they're good. I think this offensive line is better than last year's Got about three NFL draft picks up there for next year. And Najee Harris is, is a pro as well. Four returning starters from a year ago on that offensive line. They create a hole for Jalen Waddell. And that's 10 more, perhaps even 11 and a first down. Back in the studio, here's Laura Rutledge. Well, Sean, time for our All-State Protection Spotlight. Clemson and Miami over on ABC. Look at the protection the offensive line gives Trevor Lawrence on the screen. Braden Galloway, he's able to score the touchdown on the opening drive. And Lawrence targeting five different receivers on that opening drive. Sean and Todd, back to you. All right, Laura, thank you. Chance for Miami to play big boy football tonight. Yeah, we'll See if learn a lot more about them tonight. They're off to a nice start. They step up in class tonight against Clemson. John Mechie, who has emerged as a great 
third wide receiver behind the future first round picks, Waddle and Smith. See, because of the start so far for Najee Harris and running the football, that sets up, what that does is that forces Ole Miss and DJ Durkin, the defensive coordinator, bring safeties closer to the line, and that opens it up for play action pass. Mac Jones is seven for seven. Najee Harris stopped short of the line to make by Lakia Henry, excellent linebacker, senior, who was their leading tackler a year ago, and Mike McIntyre was the defensive coordinator. Third down and one, tied at seven. Four and a half to go first quarter here in Oxford, Mississippi. Nice cut by Harris. First down, here's Molly McGrath. Well, Shane, Sean, Lane Kiffin admitted to me it was a risk not having his players warm up in the rain, but he didn't want them to have to change, and he wanted to mess with Nick Saban's head, but it seems like it's in his center, Ben Brown's head. He was very frustrated on the sidelines after those high snaps. Matt Corral had to calm him down, and he got extra practice on the sidelines, snapping the football. Yeah, and, and right now, that's in his head a little bit, and you can't afford to have that. It's got to be automatic when you snap, whether the quarterback's under or in the shotgun. They're going to win tonight. They're going to have to win a shootout, you would think. In the flat, Najee Harris gets away. Down the sideline, up and over. And a first down. Who would have thought that was possible when he caught the ball? But A.J. Finley couldn't get him down. And it's a first down inside the 30. Well, great effort on the outlet by Najee Harris. They were looking down the field to Waddle. He was double covered and a good decision by Mac Jones to hit the outlet receiver. 14 yard gain. Jones is eight for eight for 95 and a touchdown. Here's Brian Robinson, their number two running back. Out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Take a look at that play. Now Waddle is gonna run a deep post. They're gonna double cover him. So he does the smart thing. Find your outlet. Don't force a throw down the field. You'll have opportunities to hit the shot plays. Take the dump off. Let a guy in space make a play. And that's what Najee Harris did. The big reason why Ole Miss has been one of the worst defenses in the country. Poor tackling. They've been working hard on that. Devontae Smith, the catch, the run, the first down to the 14-yard line. Again, just the comfort level of Mac Jones. The comfort of just finding who's open, getting the ball to the right guy, out of his hands. You know, when you're comfortable and confident as he is, your vision as a quarterback improves. Your peripheral vision improves. You see the whole field, and that's what's going on with him right now. He is a very confident quarterback. Throw back. Man open. It's the tight end. Miller Forrestall chopped down at the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the tie. Little delay route to the tight end. Watch Forrestall. He's going to block first. He's right here. He's going to show block, and then he's going to slip out to the backside. Motion goes away. And again, the vision of finding the open man. Najee Harris trying to spin into the end zone. And the ball is the ball. out. It was taken away. The crowd thinks it's Ole Miss ball in the hands of Ja'Cory Hawkins. And the officials will certainly confer, but for now, they're going to mark it. Ole Miss ball inside the 10-yard line. I was standing 12 yards behind the play, and I couldn't believe it. Najee Harris almost always protects the football. He knows in the goal line situation to cover it up, and they were able to knock it out. But that ball clearly came out, and I'm standing right here. Najee Harris's first fumble of his career. And a big takeaway by the Rebel defense. We're back in Oxford, Mississippi. Najee Harris has fumbled for the first time in his career. He's a senior. My question, Todd, watching it live was, was his forward progress stopped? And let's bring in Matt Austin, our referee. Uh, what do you think here, Matt? There weren't any whistles, certainly. Yeah, hey, Sean, Todd. I, I, this play happened very quickly. Yes, re forward progress could have been ruled, but if you watch it in real time, he was pushed back. The ball came out fairly quickly. Uh, they did not rule fumble. Uh, I mean, excuse me, they did not rule forward progress. They ruled it a fumble, and it's not reviewable. It's 
First career fumble, and Ole Miss taking advantage immediately. Snoop Connor all the way from the seven across the 40-yard line and out at the 41. This is the kind of run defense that we've seen from Ole Miss the last couple weeks. Losing the edge, losing proper contain, losing leverage, and a play busting out the perimeter. And, but it's this time it's Alabama's run defense and Snoop Connor with the big play. And for a 34-yard gain, now Corral what a play. on target. Lane Kevin was marveling about his ability to throw from different arm angles through one at three quarters to Dontario Drummond. Well, first of all, he got away from the pressure. He stepped up underneath the rush, and then he slung one sidearm accurately for the first down. It was a heck of a play by Matt Corral. Excellent athlete from Southern California. And look out. That play looked like it might get blown up, but here's the talent of Elijah Moore on display to turn it into a one-yard gain before he was yanked down by Will Anderson. Well, right now, the favorite target for big plays has been Kenny Yaboa, the tight end. And really, last week, the tight end for AM, Jalen Weidemeyer, gave Alabama problems in the middle of the field as well. Really taking their time. Now, this is a team that loves to play fast. This time, they took a lot of time to see what Alabama was going to play defensively. Snap it at four on second and nine. A rocket thrown to Elijah Moore. Good for another first down to the 38-yard line of Alabama. Great job again by Corral coming out of the fake, snapping his hips quickly, and delivering a strike before the safety could come over the top and make a play on the football. Saw Pete Golding, the defensive coordinator. Ole Miss moving the ball well here in this opening quarter. Jerry and Ely swatted down by Jordan Battle, but by the time he knocked them down, the extra yardage collected for another first down. Sean, we were here a couple years ago, and Ole Miss scored on a long pass early against Alabama, and the rest of the game, it was a blowout by Alabama. This game feels completely different because this Ole Miss offense is good. They can move the football and they can score. Final play of the quarter, Elijah Moore. Again in trouble and dropped this time behind the line of scrimmage. Dylan That's Moses the the there and Jordan Battle for Alabama. Well, it figured to be interesting when Saban and Kiffin got together and it was interesting before it even got started. The game's been even better. to have the AT&T 5G Skycam here tonight. That was a little iffy earlier in yeah. the week when we thought we might have 40 mile per hour winds, but they joined us late here in Oxford, Mississippi. It's a pleasant night. The light rain seems to have subsided. Light breeze as well, temperature in the mid 60s. And what an entertaining first quarter. Up and down the field they went. Each team with exactly 164 yards of offense. Crazy formation. Here's the lineman down at the bottom of the screen. And it's a Has run throw it away. fake. And he had to throw it away is correct. Well, they, it was an unbalanced line. They had a lineman out. They had two tight ends to the same side, hoping to fool the Alabama defense and hit the tight end down the middle. Alabama was well disciplined, not fooled, and they had to throw the football away. So it's third down and 12. They don't kick many field goals under Lane Kiffin. They've attempted only one this season. Very analytics driven in that decision making. He's hoping they get the first down and they do. And now the ball is out. There's a flag down. And it looks like the play went to the 11 yard line, but there is a flag down. Well, I think the player was down before the ball came out. Where the flag was thrown is usually in the area of either pass interference or holding. It looks like they're signifying offensive pass interference. Pass interference on the offense, number 84. The ball was caught beyond the line, and he was downfield blocking. That's a 15-yard penalty, third down. 
Huge penalty, the first of the game assessed to either team. Well, it's kind of a pick play. There it is. That, that's an easy call. I mean, he can he can cause interference, but he can't make it that obvious. And that's why Drummond was so open coming across underneath. So wipes out the first down. And makes this third down and 27 at the Alabama 43. The last two Ole Miss possessions, they've moved the ball, and then we had a bad snap before, and now a couple penalties and a very unmanageable third down situation takes them out of scoring zone. Just going to try to hit him with a surprise run. He'll and go now for it. Here. We'll see what that analytics book yeah. says because they got about 22 of the 27 that they needed, and it's fourth down and about four. So unusual to see Alabama's run defense get gashed like this. Now, it's third and long, so they have smaller bodies on the field, a dime-looking defense, but still out of position to make a tackle. So it is fourth and five. No field goal from Lane Kiffin. So usually the analytics tell you to go for it. There's a... Staff member right behind him with that book at all times in case there's any question. They pick up the first down. Jerry and Ely inside the five yard line. First and goal, Ole Miss at the three. Credit Matt Corral for looking it off. He looked downfield. Now here they go super fast and getting the ball to Ely on the side. Alabama scrambling to line up. Ely into the end zone, is he? Yes, he is, but there is a flag down. I wonder if Alabama had too many men on the field. That's where the flag was Cleaver thrown in that area. On the defense. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. That was really a tough run by Ely, who's not a real big back, and he ran right through the tackle of Will Anderson to get into the end zone, but they get the play on fourth down. They line up quickly and go, and they catch Alabama's defense not ready. He's quirky. We saw it again with the pregame tonight, but Lane Kiffin is a terrific coach, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. He's a brilliant play caller, and what he does is he understands problem plays for defense. He worked for Saban. The touchdown, the previous play is under further review. His dad, Monty Kiffin, was a longtime great defensive coach. He was under Pete Carroll. And being with all those defensive guys, he learned what plays cause problems for defense. And now he's blended those kind of plays with the speed and the up-tempo. Making sure this was a touchdown, and it was close. The elbow goes down. Yeah. wonder if the ball broke the plane. The legs were on an Alabama off, or one of his offensive linemen was the elbow down before the ball crossed the plane. His left elbow hit the ground. He had the ball in his right arm, reaching for the goal line. Remember, it was ruled a touchdown on the field, so it would have to be indisputable evidence to overturn that. Well, we have 16,000 here. They so weren't sure how many would show up, but. The weather better than expected. It looks like they're here and making plenty of noise. They have watched Ole Miss get throttled by Alabama lately. The last three meetings have all been won by the Tide by a combined 187 to 41. If you think this doesn't mean a little bit more to Lane Kiffin, just After watch review, that reaction. The on the field stands. Touchdown. Watch the reaction after the conversion on, on fourth down. And then even go back to the pregame when he had his team in the indoor just to play mind yeah. games with, with Nick Saban. Well, they've got 207 total yards of offense already early in this football game, and they've got this defense on their heels. And Nick Saban said it. He is a great play caller. While he was at Alabama, he helped get them out of the traditional pro-style yep. offense and into today's game of offense in the college level with run pass option and that sort of thing extra point good by luke logan and ole miss goes back up by a touchdown watch the fourth down play again lane didn't even hesitate analytics or what he felt the momentum to go for it matt corral does a good job looking downfield and then getting it out to ely 
And Lane Kiffin, as he often does, I mean, he puts his arms up right away when he knows a play is open. Before this ball was even thrown, his arms were up on the sideline. See him right there? He knew. He had the conversion, thought it might be a touchdown. They lined up super quick and got the touchdown on the next play. But what a great sequence there by Ole Miss. And Lane admitted he inherited very good talent from Matt Luke and his staff on the offensive side of the football. Not as much talent on the defense. That's going to take some recruiting classes. They've struggled defensively in recent years. They have two excellent quarterbacks in yeah. Corral and his backup, John Rice Plumley, who was the starter for most of last year and is a terrific running threat. We may see him in there at some point tonight. He's warming up as we speak. And remember, this drive started inside their five-yard line after the fumble by Najee Harris. They converted a third and forever to give him a chance on fourth down. What an impressive drive to retake the lead here. Luke Logan will kick off. You hold your breath every time. Jalen Waddles back there if he has a chance to return it. But he did not. Nick Saban is 20 and 0 in his career against former assistants. Four wins against Jimbo Fisher. Julie McElwain and Muschamp all went down three times. Mark D'Antonio, Jeremy Pruitt, Kirby Smart, Billy Napier. And Lane Kiffin, they have met as head coaches before when Lane was at Tennessee, but he was not a former yeah. assistant then. He spent one year at Tennessee, and Alabama needed two blocked field goals to beat Kiffin's balls back in 2009, 12 to 10. Mac Jones, beautiful fake, and right on target to the slanting Devontae Smith. And they're immediately out across the 45-yard line. This is a run-pass option. The offensive line is blocking run. And Mac Jones is making that decision. If the linebackers are up or their safeties are up, I'm going to throw that right behind him on the slant route. Beautiful decision and throw by Mac Jones. Came in completing 74.5% for the year, and he's 11 for 11 tonight, 12 for 12. First down again. Devontae Smith again. Well, the one thing that Ole Miss is trying to do, they've been pretty much a heavy man-to-man -man defense. They didn't feel they could play much man against these guys because of the speed on the outside. More zone by the Ole Miss defense trying to keep plays in front, forcing Mac Jones to throw underneath and hoping maybe he gets greedy and makes a mistake. 16 yards on the last play. Najee Harris, his fumble as they were heading in, was the first of his career on his 467th career touch. And I blame Molly McGrath during our Zoom call earlier this week with Najee Harris. She said, you've never fumbled in your career. And she was making That's a right. point about the weather. Yeah. It was expected to be wet. And he said, oh, man, why did you even yeah. bring that up? How'd the yeah. kicking game go last week, Sean? <laughs> yeah. I, Sean, I knocked, I knocked on wood for him, but I am not on Alabama's sideline right now. I'm a little afraid to go over there. <laughs> he said he'd look for you. Jones pressured a little bit that time. With pressure coming in his face, so the throw off target to Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith a little frustrated gesturing at Jones. Your quarterback is 13 yeah. for 13 before that throw. I think you cut him some slack. Yeah. Well, that one kind of got away from Mac Jones, and he has not been errant at all. Another big third down opportunity for him right here. Najee Harris did say he's very rarely played in wet conditions. Yeah. He's from California. So I'm more concerned about fires and earthquakes than I am rain. So he never really played a rain game or a snow game. The condition shouldn't have been a factor. The presence of Sam Williams a factor for Mac Jones as he just got dragged down back at the 40-yard line. Well, this looked like some confusion by Alex Leatherwood, the left tackle. He's usually pretty reliable. This has got to be his man. And he is late getting into his pass set. And Sam Williams goes right by him to the quarterback. It wasn't a blitz. It wasn't an overload situation. But it was a mistake by Alex Leatherwood and a big play for this much maligned Ole Miss defense. They made a couple of big plays tonight. That one from Williams. He's from Montgomery, Alabama. 15 of these Ole Miss Rebels are from the state of Alabama. Elijah Moore back for the punt from Sam Johnson. And it looked like they were going to down it at the one, but they could not. Daniel Wright was there. They 
couldn't make the play. So frustration for Alabama, the tie trailing here in the second quarter. Right back with more of ESPN College Football Primetime presented by PlayStation 5. on DirecTV Optimum and Xfinity, part of Samsung QLED 4K Game of the Week. Tough break there. Daniel Wright, a great effort, but as he batted the ball back, it hit King Makuda, went into the end zone. Instead of the Rebs starting near their own goal line, they'll begin from the 20. Good view from the progressive pylon cam. Matt Corral handed it off to Snoop Connor ahead for about a half yard, and that's all. Ole Miss has run for 66 yards, which is probably better than I think Lane Kiffin would have thought they were going to have the ability to do against this Alabama defense. They've kept this Bama defense off balance, and Matt Corral has just looked great. Very calm and collected. Nice movement through the traffic. Weaving is Connor, and he got near first down yardage. They'll mark him out about two and a half yards short, wrestled down by Daniel Wright. Missed tackle right there by Malachi Moore, the true freshman who's the starting star. A very important position in his Alabama defense. I think he's going to be a star. The back end of the tied defensive unit. Corral design rollout on target. Elijah Moore, first down to the 35-yard line. There is Malachi Moore making the tackle. And see, that's the kind of play that when the field is a little bit wet, favors the offensive player because he's running forward. Malachi Moore had to stop, change directions, and it's a little tougher for a defensive player to make that play. Good call in that part of the field by Lane Kiffin and Jeff Levy. Lane said the DBs might have it toughest tonight. The offense knows where it's going. Corral steps into a deep throw and a double coverage up for grabs. And Corral's fortunate he got away with that, trying to force it into Jonathan Mingo. Jordan Battle was closest for Alabama. Look at the Alabama defense in their two wins. Scuffled a little bit in the second half, playing with the lead in the opener at Missouri. The last week in a lopsided win against Texas A&M, 52-24. They did give up 450 yards. We saw today that's a very talented yeah. Aggie offense. Well, Kellen Mond, Florida. yeah, Kellen Mond is one of the best in, in the league. And played really well today as well. Corral across the line of scrimmage and chopped out of bounds by. Dylan Moses, who's back after missing all of last year. And that was a huge loss. He had a preseason knee injury. Coach Saban said he thought Moses was very good week one, not quite as good last week. But his leadership is key. They play with more confidence around him. He gets them lined up in the right spots. Third down and three. Corral with pressure coming. Got rid of it incomplete, trying to get it to Dontario Drummond. Well, this was a delay blitz by the corner, Sertan. He's going to come right through here, unblocked. And that's why Corral had to get rid of the football. Well-timed blitz coming from the short side of the field, so that corner doesn't have as far to run, and he forces the throw away by Matt Corral. Matt Brown to punt. Jalen Waddle back deep. SEC Special Teams Player of the Year last year. Averaged 20 yards per punt return for his career, the Alabama record. Teams aren't punting it to him, and they don't punt it there as well, but it's a short punt. Nine twenty-two to go, first half, Ole Miss up by seven. in one of the great college towns in America, Oxford, Mississippi. It just seems so strange to come here. You know, there's so many things that are just awful. Everything about COVID, is just about everything's awful. Yeah. Less traffic's a good thing. But this is one of the great tailgating centers yeah. of college football in the Grove. And to drive by there and uh, see nobody there was jarring coming to the stadium here tonight. Brian Robinson, a nice first play of this possession good for 18 and a first down for Alabama really strong block by Miller Forrestall the tight end came pulling in to lead on that play got a nice block on Lakia Henry and a nice strong run that time by Rob Brian Robinson pressure off the corner Sam Williams makes another big play 
See, they're pulling the backside tackle. Watch this. Evan Neal is going to pull, and Williams is just going to follow him. He's following him to the football and uses his speed to chase down Brian Robinson. Nobody able to account for the speed of Sam Williams, and he takes a good course to the ball behind the line of scrimmage. And we're talking to Mac, Mike McIntyre, the defense coordinator last year about Williams. He raved about his talent. Wide open, Devontae Smith with a block inside the 25 and down at the 20. Taken down by A.J. Finley. See, Ole Miss is forcing Mac Jones to throw underneath. Well, when you do that, you've got to tackle. You can't let him run in space. Nice job after the catch by Devontae Williams. It's not a long throw, but it ends up a long completion because of the run after the catch. They had 11 for 274 and five touchdowns against Ole Miss last year. He has six for 102 and a score in the first half tonight. That last one was 36. They gouge the Rebels again with Robinson straight ahead. First and goal tied at the seven yard line looking for the game tying score. Same play they ran earlier. They pull the backside guard and the tight end Miller Forrestal and that's just that's just big boy football and that this offensive line for Alabama is much, much bigger than the defensive front of Ole Miss. And they are right now trying to establish a physical presence running the football. They gave Robinson the six, now out of the pistol. Robinson outside, nice cut. Drives toward the end zone and is out of bounds near the one. Tyreekus Tisdale made the tackle. Couple big blocks as we take a look at the right near the pylon there. The tackle short of the goal line. Miller Forrestal, a couple big blocks in this possession. We've seen some highlights of Trevor Lawrence. They were from the same high school. Miller Forrestal was a quarterback before Lawrence got there. Second and goal from the one. It's Robinson, not Najee Harris. He gets collared, but he scores. Touchdown, Alabama. An extra point away from tying it again. What a good answer and, and a physical answer. It wasn't a fluke play. It wasn't a long explosive play like Alabama has been having the first two weeks. I mean, it was a punch you in the mouth response by the Alabama offensive line. And instead of Najee Harris, it was Brian Robinson doing the work on this drive. His first touchdown of the year. Scored five last year, hometown young man from Tuscaloosa, Hillcrest High School. And the score is confirmed, and now Will Reichert will try to tie it. Matt Jones stays on as the holder. Don't see that much from starting quarterbacks anymore. He's done it for the last few years, and very well. Brian Robinson leads the way on Alabama's second scoring drive of the night. He's now their leading rusher for the game with 44 yards and a touchdown. And the hardest working person in broadcasting, Laura Rutledge, will be uh, on the sidelines for one of those two Monday night games. Jerry and Ely the ball carry. She's in our studio tonight. She hosts <laughs> SEC Nation. Uh, she's terrific on NFL Live. Yeah. Uh, not only is she the hardest working person, but enormously talented too. Providing us all the well. all day today. Five yard gain on first down. Jerry and Ely with a five yard gain on second down and it looked like it would be a loss officially a six yard pickup in a first down and Alabama continues to try to bring that that slot corner blitz the cat blitz and Ely there just felt it and was able to make a sharp cut he's so quick he's fun to watch yeah, he's got very quick feet he's not overly big but he can really run 5'8 190 here he is again he's a terrific running back he was their leading rusher among the running backs last year 722 yards as a freshman and he says his future is in baseball he's yeah. an outfielder on the Ole Miss baseball team uh, Kyler Murray said that too <laughs> here's Ely 
Runs pretty tough for a center fielder. Yeah. No offense to center fielders watching tonight. That goes to the 42. I think Kyler Murray, though, is a little bit more of a football prospect yeah. than Jerry and Ely is. Well, and, you know, Kyler's a quarterback. It's a little different beating that the body takes, typically. And, Way to uh, ruin the joke, Sean. <laughs> Sorry. That was a good joke. Especially by the low bar that we set on our telecast. Look out, Corral manages to get away from Will Anderson, running out of time, gets away from Dylan Moses, gets the first down, gets into tied territory. What a play. I mean, these are two fast guys. Now, first of all, watch as he comes out of the bootleg and he sees Will Anderson. The first thing you have to do is you have to get your head and eyes around and identify where the pressure is. He outruns Anderson. Now Dylan Moses can run as well, and he gets by him and gets the first down. Excellent play. 14-yard gain, hands it off straight ahead to Snoop Connor. Carell was the starting quarterback at the beginning of last year. They went two and two, but in a game against Cal, he suffered a rib injury, missed the next two. They went to John Rice Plumley, continued uh, to change the offense. Here's Corral again because Plumley is a terrific runner yes. and they had success with the running game. So uh, when Corral came back, he was basically the backup to Plumley. Yeah. And Matt told us when we visited yesterday, if there hadn't been the coaching change back to a pass happy attack, he probably would have transferred. He liked the previous coaching staff, but just didn't want to play yes. in that offense. And that happens a lot in college football now. Guys want to get out, they want to play, or they want to go somewhere where they have a better chance. Fourth down, going quick. Snoop Connor got them within one yard of the first down. Snoop Connor has much more this time. Jordan Battle shoves him out at the nine yard line. First and goal, Ole Miss. They had all the receivers to the left. Alabama shifted their defense to the left, and they ran Snoop Connor to the wide side of the field. Again, problem plays. The formation created a problem for Alabama's defense, and then the run crushed them on fourth down. The fake to Elijah Moore. Connor spins inside the five and got to the one. Lane Kiffin sensing that the tempo is creating the problems he wants to create right now. Again, Alabama running men on the field, and Connor bulls his way into the end zone. Ole Miss takes a touchdown lead for the third time tonight, and there's a flag thrown after the play with some entanglement by the far pylon along the goal line. Great job blocking by the left side, the center, Ben Brown, the tight end, Yaboa. A powerful answer by this Ole Miss running game. But the tempo going for it on fourth down without hesitation. You know, when we talked to Lane Kiffin and Jeff Levy, it was really interesting because there was a blend between Lane's ability to create problem plays with the speed and the tempo that Jeff Levy did when he was at Baylor. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 28 on Alabama. That penalty reinforced on the kickoff. The touchdown is good. That is number 28's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Josh Joe, the official gets right in between. And He's very lucky as yeah. he gave the official a little shove that he uh, is still in the game. Another one of those, and he will be ejected. That's why they make the announcement about the first. But he's lucky that he gave the official yeah. a little bit of a push away. Here's Luke Logan trying to give them a seven point lead for the third time. Ole Miss has a lot of weapons too. Including Snoop Connor, the backup running back. Fourth down conversion, got them close. And he did the rest as well to the frustration of Josh Job. And the Alabama Crimson Tide. In well, pass happy Ole Miss on that last touchdown drive. 11 plays, all of them runs. Of course, there were a couple of the called passes. Matt Carell memorably took off running. They go 75 yards, 44 from Snoop Connor. 
including the touchdown and the big 26 yard play on fourth down yeah. that kept the drive going. Nifty footwork by Matt Corral and then great play calling by Jeff Levy. Not picking off the midfield. Maybe you might try a little squib or something like that, but Lane Kiffin elects to just get Alabama to start at the 25. Take a look at our Corona premier moment. It was at fourth and one play. Now, there's going to be three wide receivers to the boundary here. But watch Alabama. These defenders, they're all trying to figure out where to go. And then the ball is snapped, and it's going to go back out to the wide side of the field. The formation was to the boundary. The play went to the field. Alabama's defense was completely out of position. Then they lined right up and went quick on the goal line. Caught him out of position again. That's Jeff Levy. He's the offensive coordinator for Lane Kiffin. And Lane told us Jeff calls most of the plays. So we need to give him his due. Yeah. They get it in very quickly. Do they uh, getting those plays in the pace at which they go? Devontae Smith, a short gainer. Levy, the last couple of years at UCF, offensive coordinator last year under Josh Heupel, who's been a great friend of Jeff Levy since they were at college together at Oklahoma. Mac Jones, beautiful pocket, has Waddle. Seems surprised that he had so much room on the catch. And they'll mark him where he went down at the 42 yard line. We'll see if Alabama plays with a little more sense of urgency here. Still a very close ball game, but again, a lot of zone defense. So the underneath throws, but guys like Waddle, Devontae Smith, and John Mechie, who has been very quiet in this ball game, as Waddle kind of comes off a little gingerly at the end of that play, that's not a good sign for Alabama fans. Well, he could play on one leg and he'd still be the fastest player in the game. <laughs> Play action fake and Jones on target it seemed, but Mechie couldn't corral it. Jalen Jordan in coverage for Ole Miss. Mechie last week, five catches, 181 yards, and two long touchdowns. When we talked to Steve Sarkeesian before the opener against Missouri, he said he's the wild card of our offense. We know what Devontae is, we know what Waddle is, but that guy could be the difference for us. Najee Harris lowers his head and then gets driven back from the 47 yard line. They'll need about five to convert here. Let's see if we can tell where uh, Waddle was hurt. You see the end of the play, the tackle by Momo Sonogo. And he just twisted the ankle a little bit, but he looks to be okay to come back into the football game. They send him on late. For a key third down and five clock running a minute 40 to go in the half Alabama has not led this is the third time they've trailed by seven they have all three timeouts left Jones pulls it down and dives I don't think he got there there is a flag down on the play he might have gotten there with the dive now if he slides he's not going to get the first down but because he dove head first I think they might. I may think he might have gotten it. But I think we'll he got a very is. favorable spot there. Let's check out the flag first. It might be a moot point anyway if it's against the defense. Holding on the defense, number 46. That penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. First down. And we don't see Mac Jones decide to run nearly as much as Matt Corral, but that was a good decision. Nobody was open down the field. He made the quick decision to run and dive for the first down, but they got the first down because of the penalty anyway. Still haven't seen Alabama be able to attack on a deep vertical. Again, Ole Miss trying to keep everything in front and make the throws go in front of them and underneath. Jones loves play action pass. Throws it up for grabs and was almost intercepted by Ja'Cory Hawkins, who stepped in front of John Mechie. Hawkins already with one takeaway tonight, the big strip on the goal line of Najee Harris, and then he recovered the fumble that he caused. Well, they tried to go hitch and go to Devontae Smith. That was covered, so he went to a secondary receiver, but the pass was thrown behind Mechie, and it was nearly intercepted. Only the third incompletion by Jones. He's 15 for 18 for 204 and a touchdown. He steps up, throws on the run, and it is caught 
at the six yard line. John Mechie, they'll spot it at the five. First and goal, Alabama looking to tie again. And Mac Jones, when we talked to him a couple weeks ago, said that, you know, Mechie, you want to know about him? I was on scout team with him a couple years ago, and I learned every single move that he makes and really got a dynamic going between the two of them. And you can see there, getting the ball out early and knowing exactly where Mechie was going to be. Yeah, great adjustment to the football by Mechie, too. You could tell he's used to working with Mac Jones on a play like that out of the scramble. 32-yard gain, Najee Harris, touchdown Alabama. Just a little inside zone, power football. Watch the center, Landon Dickerson, kind of clear the way. He's right here, number 69, six foot six, 325 pounds. He clears the way. And then Najee Harris runs through the arm tackle at the goal line. One response and answer after another in the first half of this one. It's 10 straight games with a rushing touchdown for Harris, longest active streak in the country. It's his 26th career rushing touchdown at Alabama. One more and he'll move into the top 10 all time. 336 yards of total offense for Alabama, 304 yards for Ole Miss with a minute left in the first half. Seems strange to say with 21 points on the board for Alabama and as you said, 336 yards that uh, almost seems like the Ole Miss defense has played better than they some have. expected. They've made some plays. They've, They've had made to take away. You know, and, and it's a defense right now that is not going to just stuff people. You know, they don't have the personnel to do that. So they have to have timely stops and some takeaways. And, they, and they've been able to do that a little bit tonight, like they did last week against Kentucky. Even though they gave up 400 yards rushing and 41 points, and they had some timely stops. They won the game, and that's what it's all about. Will Riker ties it with exactly one minute to go in a scintillating first half. One of the nightcaps here on a tremendous day of college football, hosted back in our studio by Laura Rutledge. Yeah, the State Farm Halftime Report coming your way, Sean, and Miami and Clemson in progress. Now they're nearing halftime, 14-3 to the score. Clemson with the lead there. We'll update you on that, as well as a wild day in the SEC. Also telling you about that Red River showdown that turned into a complete marathon. Jesse Palmer and Joey Galloway here with me. We'll see you soon. You know, I know Texas lost. They're really a competitor in college football than Sam Ellinger. Uh, he's fun to watch. You know, he plays the game a lot like Tim Tebow used to play. You know, can put the team on his shoulders, put him on his back, running it, throwing it, and uh, just ran out of ran out of good plays today. And Spencer Rattler, yep. he's a star, too. Yep. I Got wouldn't benched. surprise if he's the next Heisman Trophy winning yep. quarterback at Oklahoma down the road. I think it's going to happen this year. Chase Allen. Picks off their catch made by Jerry and Ely. I would think with a minute to go in a tie game, the play calling will continue to be aggressive and creative. Yeah, aggressive, creative, keep this defense on their heels. A lot of good play action and good decisions by Matt Corral. This was a great call at the goal line, show the quarterback run, and I just think their ability to mix run and pass has been excellent. Couple fourth down conversions, critical fourth down go. You know, and, and the team is confident. When the coach shows that kind of confidence to immediately go for it on fourth down, the team responds to that, and they've been perfect on fourth down tonight. Rush for 156, more than they average for the two games in their entirety coming in. Jerry and Ely stopped after a two yard game. Well, you're probably going to have to outscore them with your defense That's such right. as it is if you're Lane Kiffin. So I would think you try to take advantage of this possession, but they're not going very quickly, even with three timeouts. You know, you, you've played a beautiful first half right now. I mean, your offense has done what you wanted them to do. You've got a confident football team that's going to go into the locker room. I, I think you play very smart and very safe right here and be very happy with where you are in the game. Shows a lot of maturity from him. Five years ago, it might be a different deal. And yeah, they're content to uh, go into the locker room in a tie game. Dylan Moses took down Ely. 
I mean, this is the number two team in the country, the big boy on the block in the SEC West, and you have played them off their feet in the first half, and the stats are almost dead even, and the scoreboard's dead even. Well, Lane Kiffin kept his team off center stage in the pregame once they came under the bright lights of Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. They played toe-to-toe -to -toe for the first two quarters with the number two team in the country. 308 yards of offense for Ole Miss, 160 of that on the ground. Here's Molly McGrath. Thank you, Coach. You told us the key against Alabama is to hang in and frustrate them. What are you doing to frustrate Alabama most in this first half? Well, I think the tempo, we had them frustrated a little bit there and, you know, hit some big plays. We're giving too many big plays on defense. And you're going to play the best team in the country. we got to play perfect, which we're not. And so we're going to have to play better the second half. You know what Nick Saban's halftime locker room is going to look like. What are you going to say to your team at halftime? We just got to keep playing. This is where we expect to be in a tight game with these guys. And now we got to make more plays than they do in the second half. All right. Thank you, Coach. Sean. 23 and a half point underdogs tied with Alabama at the half. Let's send you now to the State Farm halftime report. College football primetime presented by PlayStation 5. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. It's already been a thrilling day around the Southeastern Conference. And we have a very exciting game here in Oxford, Mississippi tonight. Number two, Alabama and Ole Miss tied at the half, 21 apiece. Are you surprised, Todd? I'm not surprised that they were able to hang. I knew that they could throw the football. The only thing that surprised me is that Ole Miss ran for 160 yards in the first half against this Alabama defense. If someone had told Lane Kiffin that, he would have said, you're trying to feed me rat poison. The Alabama ball first here in the second half, a little squib kick. And Jalen Waddle had a dive on it at the 15-yard line. Time now for another Pacific Life game summary. Well, Mac Jones had a, is having a game like he's had all season. 16 and 19, and 236 yards and a touchdown. The Ole Miss defense is still on pace of giving up over 600 yards of offense, but they did get the takeaway, taking the ball away from Najee Harris and the offense. Under Lane Kiffin and Jeff Levy, the play calling, super creative, super aggressive, going for it on fourth down. It's been a fun game so far. On target again, Mac Jones to Devontae Smith. Had more than 100 yards receiving in the first half. That's his eighth catch. And Alabama had four explosive passes, passes of over 20 yards or more in the first half but none of them were thrown down the field that far. Look out. Jay Harris across midfield. Najee Harris chopped down at the Ole Miss 41-yard line by Jalen Jones. Well, Tariq Tisdale actually had him tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Watch number 22 has him wrapped up with two hands. Can't bring him down. That's the strength and the power of Najee Harris. And then you saw too many defenders roll inside and lose the leverage of the defense on the edge. 35-yard gain. Jones slings it out wide to Devontae Smith again. His ninth catch of the night after he had 11 and five touchdowns last year in Tuscaloosa against Ole Miss. Alabama now over their average coming in for running the football. They came in averaging 110 yards. And after that last Najee Harris run, they're at 135. So Steve Sarkeesian getting what he wants out of the running game more tonight. Ole Miss crowds the line, and Najee Harris runs right by them again. Inside the 10, lunging for the pylon. And it's a touchdown for Alabama. Well, this is a counter. They bring the backside guard in the tight end, and, and Ole Miss, this was their problem last week against Kentucky. They lose leverage of the defense. Too many guys moving inside and they allow the back to turn the corner easily, and then Najee Harris fights and gets that football to the pylon for the touchdown. The explosive the progressive run. pylon, camera, sorry, Todd, sorry go ahead. about that. The explosive run was really what was missing in the first half from Alabama. They were so yeah. frustrated they couldn't get that big run. Especially after they watched the tape of Kentucky do it over and over again exactly. last week against this Ole Miss defense. So Nick Saban and the Tied, leading for the first time tonight. 
And Harris with that 33-yard score goes over 100 for the first time this season in three games. 13 rushes for 114. And now two touchdowns. Well, take a look at this again. Now, they're going to pull the backside guard and this tight end. Now, somebody on the Ole Miss defense has to set a solid edge and not let this ball bounce outside. But watch the Ole Miss defenders get too far inside. Lakia Henry gets blocked inside. A nice block by Devontae Smith, but that's too much grass on the outside of the defense. And that's just a defense not fitting the run properly. And when we talked to DJ Durkin, he said, you know, that has been our problem. And it's, it's a matter of trusting the guy next to you and trusting yourself to do your job. And that didn't happen. It's so tough on all these new coaching staffs around the country. You know, they get the job in early December, waiting for spring practice to install your offenses and defenses, and then spring practice goes away because of COVID. Tiffin told us he's really still just getting to know a lot of his players, particularly on the defensive side. Darian Ely stopped as he crossed the 20 yard line. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Alabama head coach Nick Saban said his team was frustrated on defense in that first half, saying, you know, they're finding success on the boundary. We're not adjusting well. We're not tackling well. We're just making way too many mistakes. And he said he challenged his team in the locker room, saying, this is your opportunity to show me what you are made out of. No one said this would be easy. Show me your character in this second half. Well, the offense certainly showed it. The offensive line, the running of Najee Harris. Now it's up to that defense that Nick was not too pleased with in that first 30 minutes. Matt Corral, 11 out of 16 for 148 and a touchdown in the first half. Snoop Connor taken down from behind as he approached the 25. Look at the first half stats brought to you by PlayStation 5. Very even, and that was reflected in the tie score at halftime. High snap. Corral took it down, gave it to Connor, and he has a first down. Well, really nice job by Ben Brown, the center, coming off of a double team, getting to the second level, and that's what got the first down. Nice running lane for Snoop Connor. With the seven yards, Corral down the field. It's the tight end, Yaboa, off to the races again. Touchdown, Ole Miss. 68 yards. Boa's second touchdown of the night. Lane Kiffin told us we didn't have any tight ends when we got here. They were fortunate to scoop up Yaboa out of the transfer portal. Rick Logan stutter stepped a bit in anticipation of a snap that didn't come, but he still made the extra point when it did. Well, Yaboa is right here. He's going to just go on a crossing route, and the guy that's going to get beat is this free safety, Daniel Wright. Daniel Wright had a pick six last week against AM. Watch him try to cut underneath the route and make a play on the football. He's late, he doesn't get there, and there's nobody behind him. He is the deep responsibility. He went for a big play, and it ended up being a touchdown for Ole Miss. And again, last week, the tight end for Texas A&M really hurt this Alabama defense, but not as much as Yaboa is hurting him tonight. Yaboa got here in the spring, but again, they didn't have spring practice. He has four catches tonight for 143 and two touchdowns. 47 career catches at Temple. Graduated with a degree in advertising, working on a master's in health promotion here. There is an injured player down for Ole Miss.
Hershey. DC, the Lakers still leading three games to two. Coverage starts with NBA countdown at seven. Luke Logan kicks off. And squibs it down the middle. That was not a good idea. No. Carl Tucker picked it up and ran it back to midfield. A great field position for Mac Jones and Alabama. They scored in their last couple of possessions. Well, it's been a lot of fireworks. I mean, this was right at the end of the half. Najee Harris with the touchdown to tie it up. Then the first possession of the third quarter, a couple big runs by Harris, capped off by this touchdown run. Not daunted at all. Ole Miss comes right back. The pass from Corral to Yaboa. A little missed coverage on the back end. And three consecutive touchdowns in a very exciting football game. Brian Robinson giving him a nice one-two punch with Najee Harris in that backfield. He crossed midfield. They marked Tucker on his return down at their own 48. So now they're at the old Miss 47. With an offense as good as Alabama's, they're a real mistake on that kickoff, Sean. You don't want to give them an opportunity to have a short field. I mean, you're playing zone defense to make them throw underneath. Don't give them a short field to start. I understand why they want to keep it away from Waddle. It's the most dangerous return man in the country. Devontae Smith welcomes the contact. Kedron Smith rode him out of bounds. It's another first down for the Tide. He certainly found a rhythm on offense. They're at the 33-yard line of Ole Miss. And the best thing that Mac Jones is doing in the throw game is he's not forcing the ball down the field. And that was a huge cushion on Devontae Smith. He, it's an easy throw and catch. Just take what the defense is giving you, and those guys are good enough to break a tackle and make a big play. Jones off a career-high 435 last week in the win against a and Robinson couldn't break free from the tank uh, tackle around the ankles He got to the 30 picked up three Ashanti Sistrunk backup linebacker made the play For Ole Miss they've been playing tonight without Jacquez Jones ordinarily in the middle of that defense of the linebacker level He suffered a head injury last week against Kentucky didn't get cleared to play Obviously a big disappointment particularly for him. He's from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, He's looking forward to playing against the Tide. Wow. Pass batted down. Incomplete pass. It was Ryder Anderson, the senior defensive end, big guy at 6'6", out of Katy, Texas. Well, the only interception that Mac Jones has thrown this year was a play just like that last week against Texas A&M. It was intercepted and returned deep into Alabama territory. And that was almost his second interception of the year. Alabama looked like it was about to go quickly. Ole Miss was scrambling the lineup. Jones sought help from the sideline. Big third down and seven. Thrown for Devontae Smith, incomplete. And there is a flag thrown. It looked like he was being held as the ball was in the air. Keydron Smith doesn't like it, but from here, it looked like he was being held. Pass interference on the defense, number 20. 15-yard penalty, touchdown. Well, there's contact. I, I don't know if that's enough to warrant pass interference. Well, the reason why it looked, because it looked like Devontae Smith couldn't get his right arm around to the ball because it was being held. And Matt Austin back in Charlotte nodding that he yeah. agrees with what I just said. He thinks it's a good call and there's a false start. Before the snap, the offensive line was pulling. False start on the offense. Everyone except the center. Five-yard penalty. First down. I think Landon Dickerson might have forgotten the snap count. Take one more look at this pass interference. Did he have a hold of the arm? Yep, he did. That, you're right. The right arm got grabbed. Nice catch by you and Matt Austin. Even a stop clock is right twice a day. <laughs> First and 15 now from the 20. Alabama's led only once in this game. Three times in the first half, they were down by seven. Each time came back to tie it. It was 21 21. At the break, through the middle, another beautiful, accurate throw to John Mechie. He's to the three, and it's first and goal tied on the move again. I know I've said it a lot, but again, the patience 
of Mac Jones facing more zone defense than they anticipated coming into the game based on the tendencies of Ole Miss's defense in the first two weeks. But he's not trying to force any throws. Good protection, he's reading the field, and he's hitting the open man. And it's a beautiful play fake to Robinson. Dumped off in the flat, and Forrestal has the touchdown. Got chopped down prior to the goal line, but stayed airborne long enough. Off the hit by A.J. Finley, and Alabama goes back on top. Watch how Mac Jones hides the football after the fake. He's going to fake to Robinson and put the ball in his belly. And that allows him to just freeze the defense momentarily and allow Forrestal to slip out in the flat. If that defensive lineman or linebacker can't see the football, they just stop and freeze for a moment. That's all it takes on the goal line. And Mac Jones gets the touchdown. And the extra point good by Will Reichert. Miller Forrestal's first touchdown of the season. Crowd still booing. They don't like that pass interference call. The hold on Kedron Smith looked to be the right call. He had a hold of the right arm of Smith. Forrestal, fifth year senior, puts them back up. Dave inside to become the head coach at Florida Atlantic. Lane Kibben's had some fun on social media. Good-hearted fun, I would yeah. think. I don't know how much Coach Saban. I don't know how much Coach Saban's on social media, though. You know, no, I don't I'm think sure people tell him mm -hmm. what has been said, but I don't think he's. Chase Allen's kickoff for the touchback. Well, earlier this week, Lane Kiffin asked about playing against Nick Saban on Dan Patrick's national radio show. So, well, I don't. Play. He doesn't time play. Out on the field. We'd have a better chance if that was the case. I don't think he could cover me. He's elderly now, and he's had a hip replacement. And Coach Saban said he's probably right, but Nick still prides himself on his ability <laughs> to cover. He doesn't think he could cover Lane Kiffin, 23 years his junior. Uh, you saw the expression that Lane used. Nick Saban called these uh, butt chewings and a slightly less delicate word for butt. Yeah, they're not, they're not arguments, and they're not discussions. They're one-sided chewings. Mm -hmm. So yes. I think Lane was enjoying that when he was at FAU when he watched other people <laughs> getting the rear end chewings from Coach Saban. Injured players, Cameron Latu. In Oxford, Mississippi, first down Ole Miss. Matt Corral looked like a busted play, and he got ripped down by Chris Allen for no gain. The injured player on the kickoff was Casey Kelly, 81 for Ole Miss, and he's fine, ran off the field under his own power. He's been smiling on the sideline, as you can see right now. Walk on from Niagara Falls, New York. Corral, deep throw after the fake, oh, and it's off the throw. hands of Elijah Moore. There is a flag down. Wow, they're going to call offensive pass interference. This was a beautiful throw by Corral. Pass interference on the offense, number eight. Half the distance, second down. You know, we were just talking in the break about it's been kind of quiet night for Elijah Moore after early in the game. There's the push off oh, with the left hand call. to get separation. You can't throw it any better that. over the outside shoulder. Don't you think they're just hand fighting out there? I mean, he kind of shoved them away because it looked like he was being held first. Well, he created space for himself, though. That That's the thing that you're not supposed to be able to do. Let's bring in Matt Austin. What do you think, Matt? Hey, Sean. Uh, Sean, I agree with you. It did look like they were hand fighting. There was a little bit of grabbing each way. Uh, I, I would have preferred no call on that one. Matt, you're having an excellent night today. <laughs> oh, sure, easy for you to say. <laughs> right on it again. Yeah, I'm an experienced back judge, as you know. That's true, you are. Corral running out of time. Now zings one oh, over the middle, and it's caught. 
Sandlot ball works for the Rebs. Elijah Moore makes the catch on a low throw under duress to the 40-yard line. It was Christian Barmore putting the heat on Corral. And it was just about feeling like this was uh, this was a very difficult situation for Ole Miss if they don't convert and keep pace with Alabama right now. Yeah, it feels the previous play is under further review. This is an incredible catch right off the shoelaces. That's why they're taking a look at it. Low throw. That's Not only does he catch it, he doesn't lose his balance, and he's able to run for the first down. I mean, that is an incredible athletic play by Elijah Moore, who now they've targeted twice here in the third quarter. He started out quick, then he kind of went quiet, and Yaboa kind of became the feature guy. But this is still the guy who's leading the nation in receiving yards per game. And he is the key guy in their offense. Again, Matt Corral does a good job eluding the pressure, buying himself some time, extending the plate. Kind of a dangerous throw, throwing back across the middle. But that was a desperate situation on a third and long. And Matt Corral made a heck of a play. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a catch. First down, Ole Miss. 27-yard gain. And to your point, Alabama scored a touchdown each of his last four yes. possessions. It's looking like they might score every time they touch the ball. So I agree with you. If this was a stop and a give it back to the Alabama offense right here, I think all of a sudden Ole Miss is on the ropes, even though we're still early in the third quarter. Well, the running game is starting to kick in in a big way for Alabama, and that does not bode well for Ole Miss in the second half. Corral looked like he was waiting a long time for the back, got away from Will Anderson. Now does well to scamper out of bounds with a three-yard gain. I agree with you. There was something wrong in the backfield there. Quarterback had to hold that ball too long. A little confusion between he and Jerry and er Ely. Lucky that Corral was able to make it a positive gain at all. Corral's from Ventura, California. And three years at Oaks Christian in the Los Angeles area transferred to Long Beach Poly for his senior year at high school he was the top recruit that's Ely ahead for a couple ranked number 90 overall by ESPN originally committed to Florida came here to Ole Miss his coach in high school was Antonio Pierce yeah and a lot of other NFL people involved in helping coach that program he says he's become very close to TJ Hushmanzada the former Cincinnati Bengal wide receiver. Four man rush. Corral steps up through and takes off. And he's the lesser of the two running quarterbacks for Ole Miss. Flag down. He slid down at the 40 yard line. I think they were holding Braylon Sanders, the wide receiver for Ole Miss. I think Malachi Moore was holding him. But Matt Corral, again, his Holden running ability. On the defense, number 13. That penalty being enforced on the end of the run. First down. Matt, Matt Corral's ability to run on third down, as you take a look at this replay, here's the hold by Malachi Moore on Braylon Sanders. Looked like Dylan Moses was holding, too, on Jonathan Mingo. But when everybody's running man-to-man -man or matching patterns, when you have a quarterback that can do this on third down and seven or eight, it's just, it's very difficult to defend, and he's been doing that all season. Another high snap. You don't know if that threw off the timing of the play. It certainly didn't help. Snoop Connor stopped for very little. LeBrian Ray made the stop. Coach Saban says he's been the best of their up front players for the first three games. Corral's like watching a point guard, like a really quick point guard. The, the tempo, the ability to, to go from one read to the next, and then if everything breaks down, he's able to make a play. Yeah. Completed his pass fake, gave it to Connor again, but it's another short game. Does it seem like they've slowed down? I mean, the fast yes. tempo in the first half was so effective, and now they're not moving anywhere near the same pace. Yeah, I agree. And see, they're substituting. They're allowing Alabama to substitute. And they're kind of going against what their M.O. has been a little bit. Probably four down territory. They won't need fourth down here. Snoop Connor dragged down at the 14-yard line by Patrick Sertan. Who needs to go fast. <laughs> I mean, this is just zone play. 
Nice blocking by the left tackle, Nick Broker. Now they're going fast. I don't even know if Ole Miss was sent at the snap. And it's Snoop Connor inside the 10. This is where they've gone the fastest, when they've gotten down in this deep into the territory. This has been a beautiful drive all the way down the field. Orchestrated by Matt Corral. This will be the 10th play of the drive. Had it for almost four minutes. Huge hole. Touchdown! Terry and Ely. See, this is a tired-looking Alabama defense on this possession. Took advantage of that for a nine yard touchdown. Luke Logan adds the extra point. So each team has scored five touchdowns. They went fast down here. Now watch the safety right here. Helms, he's going to be the unblocked guy. He's got to make this play for the Alabama defense. Ely's going to put his left foot in the ground through the hole, break back inside, miss tackle and a little fatigue on that Alabama defense at the end of this possession. A beautiful drive. Caps off with a huge touchdown. Ely's not going to run over many people at 5'8", 190 pounds, but he will break your ankles in the open field, and that's exactly what he just did. I think Lane Kiffin has to be extremely pleased with the play of his offensive line. Oh, yes. They've moved some people around this week. They put Caleb Warren in it left guard uh, the line considered kind of average at best i think they've been better than that tonight they've, been, they've given corral time they've opened up holes in the running game 221 yards rushing i mean <laughs> against alabama they didn't think they were going to be able to match up and run the ball that well that's been outstanding and and when matt corral has had pressure he's had the ability to extend plays with his feet and buy himself time but the big Tied third 35, down 619 to go. The big third down play was so critical. And again, the play calling has been outstanding, really on both sides. Yes. Devontae Smith brings the kickoff out near the 28-yard line. Here's Laura Rutledge in the studio. Fifth ranked Notre Dame against FSU and FSU hanging around for a while in the Book first half. Jordan Travis making his first start for the Knowles. Four rushing touchdowns for Notre Dame, including that one by quarterback Ian Book. 42-26, Notre Dame with the lead. I wonder if uh, Notre Dame a little rusty at the beginning of that game, a few weeks off because of yeah. the COVID issues right. in their program. From the 28, Mac Jones in the pistol with Najee Harris behind him. And the senior running back. Nice cut to the inside of the spin move. Results in five, taken down by Momo Sonogo. I don't think, I, I think right now Steve Sarkeesian would like nothing more than to eat up the rest of this clock in the third quarter with an offensive possession because right now the, the defense of Pete Golding and Nick Saban, they, they don't have answers for Ole Miss's offense. And so the best thing that they can do right now is keep their offense on the field. Time of possession just about dead even, each with a little more than 19 minutes. Devontae Smith trying to turn the corner. He gets thrown out of bounds by Keydron Smith. And they're two yards short of a first down. Can Ole Miss get a stop on third down? Alabama's only three out of four on third down because they haven't gotten a third down right. very much. Touchdowns on their last four possessions. We got a lot of options here, third and short. They've been running the football well. You got Waddle out wide, and you got Devontae Smith now right here in the slot. There's Smith right there. Jones lofts it up for Smith. Boy, is he a graceful athlete. First down to the 49-yard line of Ole Miss. And Miller Forrestal does a good job there, the tight end who is in the slot, the number two, of, of not really creating a huge pick and making a scene, but definitely getting a little separation for his receiver. Yeah, and just by putting his hands up to the quarterback, he sold it that he was on a route and not running a pick. 
12 catches for Smith after he had 11 last year against Ole Miss. Harris down the far sideline, runs away from Sonogo, and is finally chopped down. The 30-yard line area, they're going to mark him at the 25, Jamar Richardson the tackle. Again, just a great decision by Mac Jones. I mean, in the first two games, they have been throwing the ball down the field deep to Waddle, deep to, to Smith, deep to Me Mechie. That's not been open today. They haven't been able to get those, so he's been dumping it off underneath and letting guys run. That's just a great dump off to the back, but it turns into a, an explosive play. Who's playing better quarterback oh, around the country than Mac Jones through these first three games of the season? 24 for 28 for 330. Admittedly, a lot of weapons around him, but he's doing his part. On target again. Mechie inside the 10. They'll give him the 8. And it'll be first and goal for Alabama with 3.51 to go in the third quarter, tied at 35. And this is what we showed in the first week. Watch Mac Jones just move slightly to his right to buy time. He's maybe not as nifty a foot as Matt Corral, but he does enough to just buy a little more time until Mechie opens up in the middle of the field. He's no game manager, I'll say that. No. He's a playmaker. In fact, there was a question in the preseason if he'd be the starting quarterback. They have a very highly touted true freshman, Bryce Young. Najee Harris refusing to go down. Finally, stood up inside the four-yard line. Ryder Anderson to the bottom of the pile. He's the nephew of the former Bama and NFL defensive end Mark Anderson and the brother of Rodney Anderson, the former Oklahoma running back who's been in the NFL with the Cincinnati Bengals. Three minutes to go. Third quarter, second and goal, Alabama. And a rare moment in this one to catch your breath. Can D.J. Durkin's defense come up with one stop here in the second half? Harris, touchdown! He slides in to put Alabama back on top on a three-yard touchdown run. Dalen, Dalen Gill had a chance to, to make a stop behind the goal line, but just the power of Najee Harris. Watch him run right through the tackle of number 14. Dalen Gill is there, number 14, but Harris is not going to be denied at the goal line. You're going to bring Najee down. You're going to have to really earn it. He is running so hard this season. Three rushing touchdowns tonight for Harris. Giving him 28 for his career. He just moved past Sherman Williams into 10th place all-time at Alabama in career the rushing the touchdowns. Touchdown. The previous play is under further review. You know, we talked to him on the phone during the week. He said, you know, this offense, even though I have not gotten off in a game yet this year, this offense, as we take a look at the replay, was his knee down before the ball crossed the goal line. He said, this offense is opening up a lot of doors for me for the next level because I'm working on being a receiver. I'm working on my pass blocking. I'm a big back. I have to prove that I can do those other things. So he's very comfortable in what he's being asked to do in this offense. But tonight, he's getting a chance to run. I thought he was down. Ball has not crossed yet. Yeah, and the knee's down. Yeah, the ball is just now going to the to break the plane. I think his knee was down. John Bible in the replay booth with Blake Parks. Let's get Matt Austin's opinion. Back in Charlotte, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with you and Todd. Uh, I do think the knee was down. The ball was probably six inches short of the goal line. Referee Matt Leffler with the headset on. Well, if you want to get better with an eye toward the NFL, hard to argue with staying at Alabama. They had nine players drafted this year. They've had at least nine drafted in each After of the last the ruling on the field four stands. years. Touchdown. Well, apparently, they didn't think it was conclusive, but thought that ball was a little short of the goal line when the knee was down. But it was through a pile of bodies, so the call stands. So five touchdowns in the last five possessions for Bama. Will Wright, the sophomore from Hoover, Alabama, makes it a seven-point lead again. 
So many people wondered when Tua Tungavailoa went to the Dolphins and they lost two first round draft picks, what would the passing game look like? Well, it's in good hands with Mac Jones and the thing he has done tonight, he's distributed the ball all over the place. He's read the defense. He's not forced the ball into bad spots. He's taken what the defense has given him. And he understands, I've got playmakers. I'm going to give them the football and let them have a chance to make plays. When he has had the opportunity to throw it down the field, he's been on target. But most of his throws have been short to medium throws. And guys just making plays for him. But I mean, look, the guy's 25 of 29, 347 yards and a couple touchdowns. And, I mean, both these quarterbacks have played very well, but you asked the question, is there anybody in college football right now playing better than Mac Jones? I don't think there can be. Here's the kickoff from Chase Allen. And Ely content to make another fair catch at the five. Here's Laura Rutledge. Travis Etienne has been given this Miami defense fits, guys. 72-yard touchdown run down the sideline. Look at the awareness right there to stay in bounds, and he accelerates to take it to the house. 28-10, Tigers, about seven minutes left in the third quarter. And to answer our question, Trevor Lawrence might be playing better. He's about the same level of the yeah. stats we just posted from Jones and Corral. But we expect the Trevor, right? And that's that's the thing that's been amazing about Mac Jones is he has exceeded everyone's expectations. Corral, wow. Boy, did he do well to duck a loss. Christian Harris was right in his face. Again, it just feels like every possession for Ole Miss is critical. Score. Yeah, they just have to score. They have to keep pace. And again, I guess you could flip that around, right? You're starting to wonder if Alabama's ever going to stop Ole Miss, too. So. Jerry and Ely driven back by Phil Mathis for a loss. Third down and long. Sean, Ole Miss knows what it takes to beat Alabama after that tied score. Matt Corral yelling at teammates, we have to respond. It's a fight they hit, we hit. And players told me there is a new swagger and belief on this team with Lane Kiffin as the head coach. And you can see that confidence with Corral. Back-to-back yeah, -back negative plays by the Alabama defense. Maybe the best possession so far that they've put out there. They've had the knack for coming up with big plays on third and fourth down tonight. They bring pressure again. Snoop Connor has a lot of what ground to cover, and he did. What a call. First screen that we've seen tonight. Third down and long. Matt Corral sells it. Look how he's looking left the whole time. And again, nobody out the backside of the Alabama defense. Great call by Jeff Levy on third and long. Just can't say enough about the play calling in this game. And a good fake to Connor. Here's Kenny Yaboa. Refusing to go down until he reached the line to make. He took Patrick Sertan along with him. There's a flag down. They might call a lineman downfield on this unless the ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure. Personal foul, illegal blindside block on the offense, number eight. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Elijah Moore, who was the outside, he was in the slot, and he's going to block down towards the middle of the formation. Watch, here he is right here. Watch him block down on this play. is going to come out. It's not much, but that's the rule. The, the, I, I, don't, I hate the rule yeah. if it's not somebody trying to decleat somebody. It's, I, it's I just, about player safety, but you know yeah. that's football, and I, I agree with you. If, if that's the way they're going to enforce that rule, then... Yeah, I just, I just think they've made it a little bit too much. I mean, that's a wide receiver blocking an inside linebacker, and he just put his shoulder yeah, into him. Football. He, he wasn't trying to decleate him. A big call, first and 24. Jerry and Ely, the ball carrier. You know, we asked Jeff Levy, you know, what's your connection to Lane Kiffin? Levy was at Central Florida. And uh, goes through Kendall Bryles. Jeff Levy coached nine years at Baylor for Art Bryles. Actually, that married Coach Bryles' daughter. There's Corral over the middle. And they've turned it into a makeable. Third down here and a big call for Jeff Levy. But, uh, Kiffin was familiar with Kendall Bryles, who worked for him at Florida Atlantic. Right. So Kendall recommended his brother-in-law 
And it has been a great marriage. They have melded their offenses together, and it's working very well for Ole Miss. Why would you want to go anywhere? Still a quarter to go, at least, in Oxford, where Alabama leads 42 to 35 over the Ole Miss Rebels. 16,000 or so here, 25% of capacity at Bot Hemingway Stadium. 68th meeting all time between Ole Miss and Alabama and a dandy. A seven point lead for Bama. Key third down and six to open the fourth quarter for Ole Miss from its own 41. Option, first time we've seen that. Oh, the play calling continues to be outstanding and the execution just as good. Jerry and Ely, first down to the 44. We saw our first screen a little while ago to convert on third down. Now we see our first speed option to convert on third down. Mixing it up, keeping the Alabama defense off balance. Each team now over 500 yards of offense. Corral, another on-target throw. Elijah Moore with an 11-yard gain and a first down to the Bama 33. Because they've run the football for 235 yards, the linebackers of Alabama have to respect that fate. They have to come to the line of scrimmage, and that's why you can throw it there. Now the play they ran by the goal line, and he threw it too far. But there are flags down. Yaboa pointing that he felt like he was being held. DeMarco Hellams picked it off. But most everybody here at Von Hemingway thinks this is going against Alabama, and the march will continue for the Rebels. Yeah, I think Dylan Moses is the guy they're going to get caught with the penalty. He was the one fooled, or one of the guys fooled, on the touchdown earlier. Pass interference, defense, number 32. He definitely had him around the waist. Nick Saban arguing, but he definitely had him around the waist. And Matt Corral, even though there was double coverage, he threw the football anticipating the penalty. There were very few flags in the first half. Alabama was penalized once before the break. Ole Miss twice. Now they're five in the game on Ole Miss, four on Alabama. And that one's a big one. We're a minute into the fourth quarter. In trouble, Snoop Connor down with a two yard loss. Phil Mathis got penetration. Almost certainly four down territory if they need it. Well, the key guy, keep your eye on Elijah Moore right there in the slot to the wide side of the field. Corral saw a gap, dives down near the 17-yard line. Here comes another critical third down for Ole Miss. They've converted their last four. That one's a busted play. Corral still might get there. He lowered his shoulder, and I don't think he got there. They're going to mark him. A yard shy, and here's the biggest play of the night so far. Fourth and one. Well, that was a busted play, and Corral did his best. Snoop Connor slides ahead across the 10. First and goal, Rebels. The fast tempo on the short yardage and goal line run plays has been outstanding for Ole Miss. Alabama has not been able to get themselves set in those short yardage situations versus tempo. And they're not set for this play either. Snoop Connor ahead for about a two yard gain. Lane Kiffin didn't even flinch on that fourth down. No, he hasn't flinched on any of them. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he definitely is going for it. He's going for the win. Yeah, he said, I don't like to kick field goals unless the book tells me I absolutely should. Snoop Connor down near the goal line. Stopped at the one. And they'll have two chances to punch it in from here. Oh, Lane doesn't like it. He doesn't think this is a real injury for Phil Mathis. Injury timeout. And we'll take the timeout with him. 12-15 to go. Alabama up by seven. DC on ESPN. 
Thrilling action all over the conference today and throughout college football and another really exciting game here in Oxford, Mississippi. And look at this, John Rice Plumley, the starting quarterback for much of last year is on the field for Ole Miss. He's a dynamic runner. Average 6.7 per rush last season, ran for over 1,000 yards to lead their team. And he lines up to take the snap. He's going to keep it. He lunges for the line. The ball comes out. Looked like the ball came out when it hit the ground. And it's Alabama ball, at least for the time being. Malachi Moore came up with it. And I wonder. Rolling on the field as the player fumbled before breaking the plane. It was recovered by Alabama. First down. I wonder, Todd, if they outsmarted themselves. I mean, you put a young man in the game who hasn't been out there all night long. I do think he's down, though. The previous Dylan. play is under further review. Dylan, might be a touchdown. It might have been a touchdown. Dylan Moses made the tackle. I think he the got the now. ball across the plane before the ball came out. And all it has to do is break the plane. I think at the very least, he's going to be ruled down there. Now, the question is, was the ball over the plane? I, mean, I don't think it's going to be a fumble. Yeah. Because to me, he's down before the ball comes out for sure. So then the only question was, to me, was the ball over the plane for a touchdown before he's ruled down? Matt Austin, you've had a few looks at it back in Charlotte. What do you think? I, I, I agree with everything you said. I don't think this is going to be a fumble. He's definitely down. Again, it's hard to see his backside hitting the ground and the ball, but it looks like he is just short. Well, so no fumble, but no touchdown. In the opinion of Matt Austin, it'll be fourth and goal uh, from a couple of inches. And it was ruled a fumble recovered by Alabama. Right, and that's what the bad if, thing. Yeah, if they I have to let it stand, it would go back to, it would be a fumble and a turnover. Right. If they, I mean, his if shoulder's they on the ground. I mean, his whole left side of his body's on the ground. Yeah, I think, I think, I agree, Sean. He's definitely down before the ball comes out. It's just a matter of was the ball crossing the plane first. What a big ruling this is. After review, the quarterback's shoulder hit down before he broke the plane. He was down. It'll be fourth down on a half-yard line. And again, regardless, Elkham, I just wonder about the decision to put him in, especially in that situation. We're going up and yeah. down the field all night long. Well, There's another look at I do think he is short there from that angle. Yeah. Well, I think that's the best angle we've seen. You know, when you run the quarterback, you gain an extra blocker. And that's that's the only thinking there of why you put him in to run him. But Snoop Connor has run, has had a career night and running with power. And Terrell has showed us he can run. Right. And I'm sure Alabama's over there thinking, well, it's going to be a run for the quarterback if Correct. they're putting him in the game, which it was. I was shocked that 10 came in the game. Corrales played one of the best games we've seen all season from a quarterback. I agree. I think they've had a great night of coaching on the offensive side, but I think that was a highly questionable move. Corral back in. And here's fourth down and goal, trying to tie it. Snoop Connor, the running back, having a career night. Snoop Connor lunges for the goal line. Touchdown. Alabama thinks they had him stopped. Well, it was LeBron Ray, number 18, who cracked down and got a piece of Snoop Connor. This is going to be another close call. Watch number 18 come down the line and get into the body of Snoop Connor. Did the ball cross the plane on this one? And this time it was ruled a touchdown. Well, progressive pylon cam. Yeah, I think that looks like it's. Well, it's tough to tell. <laughs> but uh, as you said, the key is the, the call on the field. Now, does the ball go any further? Is that as far forward as it goes? Can we let it continue to go? Yeah, it goes a little even yep. further forward. I think it that's just needs be a to touchdown. break the front of the plane. It doesn't need to completely cross the goal line. Break the plane. He's got control. Yeah, I think that's going to stand. And it has. It stands. What a game. And a long way to go. 11:31 left. Yeah. Snoop Connor, a career high in carries in a game, in yards. The extra point good by Luke Logan. And we're tied again. Well, it figured to be memorable when Saban and Kiffin got back together.
in the SEC. Great images in Oxford, Mississippi, number two, Alabama. Tied with Ole Miss as we take a look at this week's college football rankings presented by Goodyear. Clemson on its way to victory. Some debate which is the better team, Clemson or Alabama. And of course, Ohio State hasn't swung into action yet. They're two weeks away from beginning the Big Ten season. Ole Miss. This went 16 plays, 75 yards. 6.08 to do it. Ordinarily a very high tempo. 12 rushes on that possession. And for the game, they're four for four on fourth down, including the game tying touchdown a moment ago. Their running success continues to be the biggest surprise in the game. Onside kick! Luke Logan, the ball is loose. And it looks like Alabama got it. With Ben Davis there. Interesting, Lane Kiven. No faith that his defense can stop Alabama. And with good reason, the way this has been going, trying to get a possession stolen. They had it. If Luke Logan recovers it, if the ball had gone far enough, he just couldn't cleanly recover it. And Alabama was able to come up with it. Kicking team, the ball be placed at that spot, first down. Well, it had not gone 10 yards, I'm sorry. Well, I think you might be right. It was close. I thought it was, I thought he had it just far enough just could not cleanly recover it but if it didn't go 10 yards it didn't matter anyway but again a short field for Mac Jones in Alabama the 44 of Ole Miss Mac Jones slings one down the hash marks to Jalen Waddle do you like the onside kick attempt no I don't no, I, because I don't like giving him the short field. Right. I know your defense has had trouble stopping them, but maybe they make a mistake. If they have to go longer and run more plays, maybe they make a mistake or have a penalty or something. Now you just kind of shorten the field for them too much. Jones, 26 of 30 for 363. Here comes Najee Harris again. A good tackle that time by Dalen Gill. Here's Laura. Number one, Clemson pulling away from number seven, Miami. Trevor Lawrence with the keeper here for the three-yard touchdown. And just before that, Miami safety Keontra Smith was ejected for targeting after a big hit on Lawrence. He responded with a touchdown for Clemson. They're on their way to victory. Number one in the country. Number two in a tussle. Devontae Smith, plenty of room as he took the lob from Mac Jones. First down at the Ole Miss 16-yard line. Jalen Jones made the tackle. Mac Jones has missed four throws tonight. I mean, he's 26 of 30, 372 yards and a couple touchdowns. 27 of 31. With that nine-yard yeah. completion. Very bright young man, 4-0 student, undergraduate degree in two and a half years. Very athletic family, his parents tennis players, dad played professional tennis, Gordon. Here's Najee Harris, inside the five, inside the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Back on top with 10 minutes to go. Really nice play, pulling both guards. Deontay Brown, the left guard. Emil Ikior, the right guard leading the way for Najee Harris. But see, that's too easy, Sean. Short field, couple plays, and they're in the end zone. The only good news for Ole Miss, Alabama's had trouble stopping them, and there's a whole lot of time left, so. I guess the good news for Lane Kiffin, if uh, you're questioning the onside kick, you've got the ball back fast. Right. <laughs> Riker. Kickers have made every extra point tonight. I don't mind it because I don't think his defense is going to stop them I, I tonight. Don't. Here we go, pulling both guards here. Watch these two guys get out in front of the play, and then you got the big power back. Najee Harris, who's running with so much power, strength, and confidence. Both guards with blocks. There's the unblocked defender, the safety. No match for Najee Harris in the in the open field. Amalekior, 55, the only new starter on that offensive line. 
Here's a look at the onside kick. Now they called illegal touching. Yeah, it didn't quite go 10 yards, but he had a chance to recover it. I mean, the design of it was good. He just needed to let it go a little bit further. I'm guessing Luke Logan had two things in his mind. You can't really look down at the field to see if it went 10 yards. At a certain point, right. you have to be wondering, but have a little leap of faith. And the other thing is, how badly am I going to get crushed <laughs> when I do take this in? Right. Either one of which could cause you to not execute the play. So here's Chase Allen. They've been fair catching his kickoffs. And sooner or later, you might want to try to run one of these. I mean, you're at the 16 already. Right. Snoop Connor, another fair catch. Here's our king of the moment, brought to you by Burger King. Well, a lot of touchdowns in the football game. Here's the last five we've seen in our game. A lot of running by both teams. Alabama, 207 yards rushing. Mississippi, 255 yards rushing. That was the last one by Ole Miss, the, the, right on the goal line on fourth down. And then Najee Harris with the power run just moments ago to regain the lead 49 42 Four rushing touchdowns tonight for Harris of course he fumbled on the goal line early in the game Jerry and Ely a two-yard game the four rushing touchdowns the career best for Harris he has 145 yards rushing for the game second and eight Here's Ely. A lot of folks thought that Corral kept the ball, but he gave it to Ely. He went all the way to the 50-yard line for another first down, a 23-yard pickup. Missed tackle in the hole by Malachi Moore and a big run on the backside by Ely. And the tempo back up to full speed. Corral, excellent fake on target. Elijah Moore. With another first down just inside the 40. That's probably the fourth or fifth time they've run that same play. They've run the ball well. Now they play fake and throw the slant to the slot receiver. Linebackers have to honor the fake. Especially with such a good fake on the previous play. He handed the ball off, but they didn't think he had. He throws it up, back shoulder. And it's another first down. It's Kenny Yaboa again. And Malachi Moore, the freshman, had the coverage there to the 17-yard line. Size advantage for Yabo on that one. Moore is six foot, 182 pounds. Good play design. What a night for Yabo. And for Snoop Connor, career high in rushing for him. That play takes them inside the 15-yard line. Four-yard gain, 131 yards. For Connor, his previous best last season against New Mexico State when he went for 109. And Ole Miss just went over 600 yards of total offense against the number two team in the country. You don't see this happen on Alabama defense very often. Connor in trouble and dropped by DJ Dale. Well, it's not 600 anymore. Now they, now they went back <laughs> below 600. They have had four rushing touchdowns tonight. Yeah. Alabama given up only one of the first two games. That was last week against Texas A&M. You don't do that. You don't run it in against them. Corral lost the ball. And has to fall on it back at the 23. So this is a bad snap again by Ben Brown. And I don't know if Ben Brown thought the quarterback was in the shotgun or under the center, but the ball never gets up into the hands of Matt Corral. And that's a wasted play because the center just made a very poor snap. And now they're going to do something that they don't often do, and Lane Kiffin doesn't like to do. At least for the moment, they're going to try a field goal. My friend, they do this so infrequently, they don't even know how to line up and who should be on the field. They might have to burn a timeout. So it's Luke Logan with the play clock running down, and Lane Kiffin used a timeout. First Just to add to his out. aggravation, Ole the miss. kick was good after the whistle. Bad snaps costly in this close game in Oxford. Well, ben Brown grew up loving the Rebels for a long line of 
Ole Miss football players with a bad snap here. Costly, and uh, he's looked like he has been on the verge of tears a couple times on the yeah. sideline. Matt Corral went over to give him a pep talk a moment ago. So here's a field goal try for Luke Logan from 39 yards. He's tried only one this season. It was in the opener here against Florida. He missed from 42. Snap and hold are good. The kick is right down the middle. So apparently, Luke, uh, uh, Lane Kiffin's book, the analytics book, says in this situation, yeah. kick the field goal. Yeah, he's been very uh, aggressive on fourth down, and it's paid off. But they paid that off with points. And, you know, we talked about this defense. They're not going to overpower anybody. They're not going to totally stuff for, for Ole Miss to win games. They have to outscore people. But they've got to get timely stops, and, and they need to get a timely stop right now. And you think Lane Kiffin has lived up to what Nick Saban said about him, about being a terrific offensive mind, great play call along with Jeff Levy, who's really calling the yes. plays. Most points by an unranked team against Alabama since the poll era began in 1936. Well, it has been a beautiful offensive game plan. I mean, beautiful play calls, aggressive play calls. Quarterback has played well. Snoop Connor's been outstanding. Let me ask you this about the field goal, though. I know it's fourth and very long. I mean, it's very unlikely you're going to make it. But if, if you don't think your team is going to stop them again, uh, kicking the field goal, you're still likely to go down by two scores. If you think Alabama is going to score again, perhaps you uh, rationalize that they're due for a stop. You got to count on one stop. Devontae Smith elected to bring it out, and they'll swing him down at the 20-yard line. There is a penalty flag, so it may back Alabama up even further. During the return, holding on the return team, number 42, half the distance, first down. Jalen Moody. College football action continues next Saturday. Let's hope it's half as entertaining as today. Rivalry that dates back to 1937, Florida and LSU in the swamp. It's next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. After our game, stay tuned for Sports Center here on ESPN with Scott Van Pelt. Reaction from the coaches of the top two teams in the country. It'll be interesting to hear what Nick Saban has to say. His team up by four. Lots of running room for Najee Harris. Powering his way to the 25-yard line with a 15-yard pickup. Sixty yards now for Najee Harris. He's been waiting for a breakout game. And this has been that game. He had the fumble, the first of his career, but he has been outstanding. They wanted to get the running game going. It was sluggish the first two weeks. They have it going tonight. Brian Robinson been part of a terrific tandem. The sideline fired up as he did hard work to get to the 42-yard line and another first down, 17 yards. 110 yards per game coming into the game for Alabama, now up over 230 yards per in this game, and just strong running by both Harris and Brian Robinson. And some fatigue showing yep. on this Ole Miss defense. Which had been giving up 302 rushing yards per game coming in. Only Navy had fared worse defending the run. Entering today, Najee Harris taken down by Momo Sanogo, junior out of Plato, Texas. Team leader, already graduated with a degree in finance, and he came here, chance to play early. He knew they needed help on defense, but he also really enjoyed, appreciated their business school. I think, DJ, hurt. I think DJ Durkin, if this is a pass, they need to bring some pressure on Mac Jones. Get out of the zone defense a little bit in another run. And a seam for Robinson. He goes down just short of the first down by about a half yard. Jamar Richardson, the stop for Ole Miss. Here's Temple by Alabama on a short yardage situation. 
Now they're moving the chains. You see, I think Mac Jones thought it was going to be third and one. Well, they didn't get now the they... first down. They shouldn't have moved the chains. And I think there's uh, some confusion. I think they gave him a first down. Well, they shouldn't have, and now the officials are stopping the action. The ruling on the field was a first down. The previous play is under further review. Hard running again by Brian Robinson. You see the line to make. It looks like he's short. By about a half yard, and yeah. yet they placed the ball right on the uh, hash mark for the 48-yard line when he's about halfway between the 49 and the 48. Yeah, you can see his frustration as if he knew he was short. At the very least, he thought he could have gotten more out of that run. I think right now, if you're Steve Sarkeesian, you're thinking, I will be very happy to not throw another pass in the football game if I don't have to. If our running game can keep grinding it out, if our offensive line can keep imposing their will on this possession, we don't need to ask Mac Jones to do anything more. You've got a four-point lead. So Ole Miss has to score a touchdown even if you don't score right now. Field goal does them no good. But right now, the, the running game is just too much, I think, for Ole Miss. Wrapping the ankle of Devontae Smith, who's had 13 catches for 164. And a touchdown tonight. Najee Harris After is averaging. Review, the player was down before the line to gain. It'll be third down and a half yard at the 48 and a half yard line. Najee Harris averaging eight yards per carry right now. Brian Robinson, 7.6 yards per carry. This is very short. This could be a quarterback sneak by Mac Jones behind that that big center, Landon Dickerson. Who's 6'6", 325. Yeah, they moved it to the wrong place. Now they're putting it back. Between the 49 and the 48, as Matt Leffler just said. Mac Jones is 6'3", 214. And was a wing T quarterback in high school at the Bowl School in Jacksonville. So He's adept at carrying the ball. And he surges forward and has the first down. And the clock, the ally of the Crimson Tide, as we're under five minutes to go, and they're playing with a four-point lead. Well, now if you're Mac Jones in Alabama, now you're really working the clock. You want to let this clock go down as far as you can before you snap the football. If you're Ole Miss, you gotta try to get a stop of some sort to put them in a little duress behind the chains and then think about using your timeouts. They were anticipating the run, so a great call to throw the deep ball to uh, Jalen Waddell. Wow. First and goal, Alabama. Terrific play call by Steve Sarkeesian. It's a little out and up by Waddle. Good play fake to Najee Harris. You see the defensive back bite on the fake. That was Deion Leonard. And a beautiful throw by Mac Jones. He ran for the quarterback. Whoa, the ball's on the ground after the 45-yard gain. And Jones got it back. Well, they lost a couple of yards on the play. Four minutes to go. See, that, the center thought that Mac Jones was underneath. I don't know how you don't feel a guy's hands, but he snapped that right to the back of his butt where he expected the hands of Mac Jones to be. And they're very lucky that they fell on the football. Oh, how many times you see a game where snaps from center have been such a factor. Joshua McMillan, the linebacker, comes in. And the offensive backfield, and now some movement. Number 81, five-yard penalty, second down. Cameron Alatu, back up tight end. And now they're in reverse. You know, when they were at the two-yard line, you think they'd just keep trying to pound yeah. it in. But now you wonder about the play calling. 
back at the nine. Clock is running. Two timeouts for Ole Miss. You know that Lane Kiffin is thinking about when he should start to use. The, oh, the left guard move. Deontay Brown. On the offense, number 65. Five yard penalty to play second down. Hey, I'm not going to wind it. See, the thing about it, too, is if now Alabama's in a passing situation and the ball's incomplete, the clock stops. And so Lane Kiffin's able to save and utilize those timeouts differently. I would think you uh, run it on this play for sure, hoping you can gash them again and uh, keep the clock moving. They hand it off to Smith. Beautiful play call. All kinds of running room and an Alabama touchdown. Well, take a look at this safety right here. He is absolutely locked in on Najee Harris, and the ball gets handed outside. Great play call by Steve Sarkeesian. The safety goes inside. There's two blockers on two defenders, and that safety was responsible to get outside. Wasn't there to make the play. And the extra point up and good from Will Riker. And for the first time tonight, the team is ahead by more than seven points. We've talked about the play calling of Jeff Levy, Lane Kiffin. How about Steve Sarkeesian on this possession? The long pass when everybody's thinking run, the beautiful throw, and then the little jet sweep to Devontae Smith for the touchdown. Back-to-back -to -back awesome play calls. Tired of... You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Alabama leading Ole Miss in the kickoff. Another clear catch by Snoop Connor. 56-45, two-score game now with 3.16 to go. And here's our Pacific Life game summary. 1,274 combined yards. Fifth highest combined total in the long and proud history of this conference. And only 75 yards away from the record, Mizzou in Tennessee 2016. And another 400 plus yard night for Mac Jones, career high 435 last week, 417 tonight. Alabama seven touchdowns on its last seven possessions. Devontae Smith's 13 catches a career high. Najee Harris's 162 yards rushing a career high, as are the four rushing touchdowns. Ely thrown back by Christian Barmore. Christian Barmore, they're happy to have him back. He didn't play in the opener against Missouri, coming back from a knee injury. Gives them more depth up front. How about those two plays? Yeah, that's a little unusual. Two runs yield very little. And they're taking a lot of time with the clock running. It's almost as if the fight has gone out of the Rebels here with two and a half to go. All kinds of time. Corral after the play fake, throwing deep. Has a man open. Caught by Elijah Moore. And a flag down at the end of the play. Beautiful route by Elijah Moore. He's going to run a little stick route. He's going to go at the safety. It was going to be double coverage. Watch the route. Watch him go inside, influence the safety, then right up the field. Saw Jalen Waddle run the same route last week. And then there's the penalty at the end of the catch. Personal foul targeting on the 29 on the defense. The previous play is under further review. Jordan Battle. It's a 46-yard gain, and they'll tack on penalty yardage. Well, and I think this is going to be upheld because he led with the crown of his helmet. I mean, that, that's a clear targeting call. Matt Austin agrees, nodding his head back in Charlotte. So that'll mean battle's done for the night. Sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. 
Which would also mean Jordan Battle would miss the first half against their game against Georgia next week. Yeah, big one upcoming for Alabama next week. They're in Tuscaloosa to take on Georgia. Such a strange three plays. Well, they run, there are no sense of urgency. They almost look like Lane was saying, we're not gonna try to go two minutes after hurry you, up. It was and then they hit this number play. nine on the defense. Number nine is disqualified from the contest. It's a 15 yard correction, half the distance, first down. Unlike previous years, player ejected for targeting would have to head to the locker room. He will be allowed to stay on the sidelines with his teammates for the end of the game. So the ball's at the 13-yard line, 2.14 to go, two timeouts for Ole Miss. But, I mean, didn't it feel almost like yeah, Lane was no conceding at after all. two plays? On a team that's so accustomed to playing at a fast pace. Lane's been playing mind games all night. <laughs> wow. What a throw by Corral there. He's 20 to 25 for 365 and two touchdowns. He's a star in the making. Back shoulder throw incomplete for Dontario Drummond with Josh Job in coverage. The right place for the ball on the back shoulder. There is contact by Josh Job, a push. Well, the officiating wasn't involved in the proceedings at all in the first half. There's been active participants in this half and the replay booth as well. Corral, boy, that doesn't do them much. Only a two-yard gain, and the clock runs. They still have two timeouts. But they need to line up fast and run a play. And they're substituting. If Alabama was smart, they should run a sub in right now because since Ole Miss substituted, that would allow the defense to sub as well. And they'd have to wait with the clock running until Alabama got that man on the field. Four-man rush. Corral retreating. Corral running out of real estate. Flings it as he approached the boundary. Pressured by Christian Barmore. Looks like they're going to uh, call that an incomplete pass. I think you have to kick the field goal here. You do. There's a three and an eight. Yep. Gets you into a tie game. We'll get the three here. Onside kick. Hope you get that back. And here's a field goal they absolutely have to have from Luke Logan. Senior from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Only try tonight to make from 39. This is from 29. And... Ooh. Just inside the right upright. And do you have a secondary onside kick? Because you already showed one. That was really nice. It was very well very executed. Close to work. You're asking your kicker to recover. Do you have a different one to try on this onside kick to town? How about those numbers? So I don't think we're quite to the record yet. That drive was 64 yards. They needed 75 combined before that possession started. It'll be the highest combined yardage total in a game in the history of the Southeastern Conference. So an onside kick try upcoming almost for certain. Hands team out there for Alabama. Ten men up. Very close to the line. Ten yards from where the ball's teed up by Logan. Do you have a pooch kick of That's some sort? That's what I was going to suggest. Might be a good idea here. No, oh, they try the onside kick again, and it's recovered by Alabama. Mechie. John Mechie. At the 44-yard line. Nice job by Mechie being aggressive and going for the ball. I mean, he's allowed to go catch it before it crosses 10 yards, unlike the kicking team. Don't hesitate. Don't let that ball get into your body. Go get it. Luke Logan wanted to try the same exact thing. Yeah. They do have two timeouts. So I believe the one they used 
so much has happened, it's hard to remember everything that's happened was uh, when they couldn't get the field goal team lined up, yep. which was a waste. And they can't stop it twice here. And that's Najee Harris adding Almost to his career night. second charge timeout. With a three yard gain. 30 seconds in duration. And Lane Kiffin says, obviously the next big step is recruiting. Yeah. And even that's a lot harder now in this COVID world. High schools really are playing. You can't go visit anybody. They can't come visit you. So how do you out recruit people yeah under those circumstances. Well, and the one thing I think they will do, particularly on the defensive side of the ball to try to get immediate help, is I think they'll hit the junior college circuit really hard. When there's a lot of great junior college football players here in the state of Mississippi. And I think they're gonna have to go that route to get immediate help. Really needed on the defensive side. Harris, about another two yards. And the last time I will be used with 117 to go. His final timeout. 30 seconds in duration. There was a chance they could get it back here if they can stop Alabama right here. And they haven't done that all night long. What an entertaining game. I mean, offenses, performances by both quarterbacks, skill guys, running backs, play calling has been as good as I've ever witnessed. Two teams, two play callers in a ball game, matching wits. Not a good night for a defensive coordinator no, on no. either side. <laughs> so we'll see what they do here. First down and the game is over for all intents and purposes. They go to a power formation. They go to Najee Harris. Najee Harris going to the end zone for the fifth time tonight. How often do you see this? A short yardage situation. The defense is selling out. And what a great lead block by the fullback. Joshua McMillan, who is actually a linebacker. They put him in as a fullback, and he got the key block on that play. So this is... Highest combined yardage between two teams in a football game in the history of the SEC. And Najee Harris over 200 yards for the first time in his career. 23 carries, 206 for an average of nine per carry and five touchdowns. Well, he talked about it. Ran behind Landon Dickerson on the first touchdown. He talked about breaking out. The whole running game breaking out. Him having this kind of a game. He had the fumble early in the ball game, but that did not slow him down at all. He ran with power. He ran with strength and conviction. Great night for the offensive line. Great night for Brian Robinson, but the best night of all for Najee Harris. 206 yards and five touchdowns. There was such an emphasis coming into this game, running the football on this defense. It didn't come exactly the way everyone expected it to. It was really the second half where they got two big, long runs. But Harris, he's going to have to be the guy, and they have to be able to run the football more efficiently if yep. they're going to run the table. Have to have better balance, for sure. Well, Allen kicks off. Will they try to return a kickoff? No. Snoop caught. I don't understand that. At a certain point, you try to make a play, yeah, right? Don't make yourself try to go 75 yards every time. Five rushing touchdowns, by the way, ties the Alabama single game record. He's the third person to do it. Santonio Beard against Ole Miss, 2002, rushed for five touchdowns. Sean Alexander, great back, had five against BYU, September 5th of 1998. I think he's atoned for the first fumble of his career. Yes, I, I think so. The rest of his performance tonight. Last year it was Devontae Smith, a record five touchdown receptions against Ole Miss. Nice tackle by Malachi Moore, taking down Elijah Moore. And we're under a minute to go.
Corral. Swung down by Christian Barmore. Well, Alabama with this win has won 93 straight against unranked opponents. Corral slow getting up at the end of that play. Sure is. Injury timeout on the play. That will include a 10 second runoff. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 29 seconds and it will start on my ready. Adding insult to injury. Yeah, Barmore, as you said, uh, didn't play in the opener with a knee injury. He's been a factor tonight. Yes. Corral goes to the sideline. So the 93 straight wins against unranked opponents extends their FBS record, but this was one of the best challenges yep. they've had since 2007 against an unranked team. The last time they lost to an unranked opponent was November 17, 2007 against Louisiana Monroe. Open, Yaboa out of bounds to stop the clock with the first down, but we're down to 14 seconds to go. Nick Saban knew about Yaboa. What a weapon he is. So he can run, he's very athletic. Has terrific hands, and he's demonstrated all of that tonight in a defeat. And Nick Saban will go to 21 and 0 all time against his former assistants. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard when you beat friends and people used to coach for you. I think he'll enjoy this yeah. one tonight. This will be yeah. a very satisfying win. And then he'll get ready for Kirby Smart next week. You know, we asked Nick Saban about that record against his former assistants. He says, hey, we have a well-established program with great players. Most of my former assistants have left to take jobs that were way down. And we clearly had the better team going into the game. As you said earlier, some disdain, but a lot of respect yeah. between these two. And I think Nick Saban's respect for Lane Kiffin went up even more with the way he yeah. coached his team tonight. An historic night here in beautiful Oxford, Mississippi. Final score, Alabama 63, Ole Miss 48. For Todd McShay, Molly McGrath, Todd Blackledge, and our great crew, Sean McDonough, saying good night. Let's send you to Sports Center. Here's Scott Van Pelt.